Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein. I'd like to take you through the uh, integrated algebra regions from New York State, uh, the one administered June 18th, 2010. Uh, first thing you should do is, is download this, uh, this test, and here's how you get it. Uh, you go to this website, www.nysedregions.org. Uh, then you uh, scroll, uh, scroll down here to uh, high school regions, mathematics, integrated algebra, and you get all the regions here. And the one we're looking at now is June 2010. And I'd advise you to download it and try the whole test yourself first. But if you don't have time, uh, it's still good to uh, download it and then you could try the questions one at a time. So here's the first uh, two-point question. Why don't you take a uh, minute to look at that and think about what you would say. Well, for this question, uh, a set is a collection of, of objects. So the set U is a collection of these uh, six letters. B is a subset of U. That means that all of the elements in the set B, A, I, and O, are also elements of the set U. And the question is, what is the complement of set B? Well, all the complement means is all of the items that are in U but are not in B. So U has these six different letters, B has these three letters, but the letters that B is, is missing is the complement of B. So you can see if we, we see that A is part of uh, set B, and so is I, and so is O. So the complements of B are the three letters that are in U but are not in A, which is why the answer to this question is S, P, H. Which is choice number four. Now we'll move on to question number two. For this question, they want to know how many different sandwiches consisting of one type of cheese, one condiment, and one bread choice can be prepared from five types of cheese, two condiments, and three bread choices. So the idea about this question is, so we're making this sandwich and we can pick any of these five cheeses. We only have one condiment to choose from, which I have is ketchup, and we have two different breads. Now, one, the, the long way of doing this question would be to make something called a tree diagram. That's where you would say, okay, I'm gonna make a sandwich, and I sort of have five choices for my cheese, four, five, Swiss, American, cheddar, cream cheese, mustard cheese. And then for each of these uh, cheeses, I can pick one condiment, which is ketchup. Sort of a branch out there. And then for each of these sandwiches, I can pick two, sa I could pick two breads, which are rye and white, rye and white rye and white, rye and white, rye and white. And if you go to the end of any of these sort of sort of sideways tree, you can see a path. Like if I get over here, the only way to get to this spot right here is to start here, go Swiss, ketchup, rye. Whereas to get to this spot, I'd have to go Swiss, ketchup, white. So the number of different sandwiches I can make is the number of leaves at the end of this tree, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all together. Now there is a shortcut for a question like this, and it looks like this. You make these little lines which represent the number of ways you could do each of the different choices you have. So for cheese, I have five options, so I put a five here. For condiments, I have one option, so I put a one there. And for bread, I have two options, so I put a two there. And what you do with these three numbers is you multiply them together and you get 10, which is exactly the same answer that I got when I uh, counted up after drawing the tree diagram. And that's why the answer to this question is choice one. Okay, let's move on to the, uh, to the next question. Question three. They want to know the sum of these two polynomials sum of 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 3 
and 3x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5x minus 5. Take a minute to work that question out yourself. Now to do a question like this you need to understand uh, the concept of like terms. When you have a, a bunch of numbers being added together, 2 plus 1 plus 5, you can, you can add them together because they're all the same type of thing. If you have variables like 2x plus 1x plus 5x, those are called like terms because they all are x's and you could add those together to become 8x. Same thing would happen with other things besides variables. Like, like if I said I have two dogs and one dog and five dogs, it would add up to eight dogs. But when you have a mix of terms, um, I could take my dogs example. I, I could say I have two dogs plus three cats plus five dogs. Well, this, it is ten animals, I suppose you could say, but more uh, specifically, we could say that I have seven dogs and three cats. So the like terms, the dogs, can get added together, but the unlike terms, the cats, we can't put together there. Well, when you have uh, something like 2x plus 1 plus 5x plus 2, we can combine the like terms. So we this 2x and this plus 5x get put together to become 7x, whereas the plus 1 and the plus 2 get put together to become plus 3. Now what's not so obvious is that if you have x's and x squares, that they don't count as like terms. So if I say 3x squared plus 2x, those cannot be combined. That's like cats and dogs. So 3x squared plus 2x plus 2x squared plus 5x, the 3x squared can be combined with the 2x squared to become 5x squared, and the 2x and the 5x can be combined to become 7x. So when I add together to the top here, 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x uh, minus 3, I can combine the x cubes together. 4x cubed plus 3x cubed, 4 plus 3 is 7x cubed. Notice how I wrote these, so I lined up so it's easier to see what's getting combined with what. Now I'm going to combine the x squares. 6x squared plus 3x squared is 9x squared. Now I have to deal with negative numbers. So positive 2x minus 5x. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. The 5 is bigger than the 2, so when you subtract, you're going to get negative. And um, since 5 minus 2 is 3, the answer to this question is going to be negative 3. And that's why this part is negative 3x. And minus 3 minus 5, when you combine two negatives like this, uh, you get negative 8. And that's why the answer to this question, 7x cubed plus 9x squared minus 3x minus 8, which is choice number 3. Question number four says, what is the slope of the line that passes through the points 3, 5, and negative 2, 2? Now I have here an x, y axis, and it's got the point 3, 5 over here, and negative 2, uh, negative 2, 2 over, uh, over here. Now something about slope that you should know, lines that are going up from left to right have a positive slope. And the steeper the line is, the, the bigger the number will be. But here's a bunch of lines that all have positive slope. A slope of 1 looks something like, like this, and a slope of 2 is steeper, and a slope of 3 is steeper than that. Whereas lines that are going down from left to right have negative slopes. So this should be something uh, positive, m equals positive something. Uh, the official definition of slope is how far does it move to the right for every uh, unit that it moves up. So what I can do is just count. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right.